everybody it's your Sam and I'm here with another video. Today I want to read you the short story from the February character randomizer. I know it's a long time coming but I have just not been happy with this story whatsoever and I'm still not happy with it but I want to get it out there because it is a character randomizer story and I have made a promise to y'all. Without further ado, here is Chete Paz. Chete's stomach performed another greasy flip. The crowd loomed in the small suburban house decorated in a mundane modern style of whites and creams. There was someone nearby, far away, in every corner, near the escape routes, and even in the bathrooms. She had little room to breathe, no escape plan, and nowhere to collect her panic in a nice little mental jar and plug it with a stopper. Her bestie, a bubbly sort that knew no fear of strangers and made strangers her friends, had disappeared. Completely. Even though she had promised not to. Jete should have known better. It was her friend's fault that she had taken a few pre-game shots to help loosen her nervous tendencies and then decided to go all out for the masquerade type party. She'd painted her skin a shimmering yellow to offset the purple dress that was sewn together like mermaid scales. Her bestie put threads that glimmered in the light through her dark brown, almost black hair to make it shine too. Not everyone wore masks though. She was. It helped. A semblance of anonymity. Another two drinks helped too. Although the last one tasted funny and it was making her skin tingle, she blamed it on her panic. That had to be the cause, not some weird drink. An exit. Street light yellow blared in from the back door square window into the gray darkness of the party and she made a beeline to it. Looking over her shoulder one last time to see if she saw her bestie, she felt her breath escape her as she slammed into a wall then fell back onto her ass. The rest of her drink sloshed over her hand, adding to the shimmer on her flesh. She wondered, for a moment, why her drink hadn't washed some of the glitter type stuff off. I'm so sorry. The voice was on the deep side of a tenor. The wall held out a hand. She took it, not thinking, and looked up and up. Chete was short. She was at one with it. But this guy was so tall. She felt like the shortest person ever next to him. She barely made it to his elbow. A grin spread. Her lashes fluttered and her body stepped into the tallest man alive so the scales of her dress brushed against his pirate or slightly underdressed soldier shirt. The laces across his broad chest made the shirt gape open nicely. Hello. Sorry, was it? His grin was a flash of light in the dark. Flick, actually. Sorry might be a better name. I tend to say it often enough in the dark at parties like this. Flick. She tried his name on her tingling lips and liked the taste of it there. She knew he'd taste good. Some nagging voice in the back of her mind screamed at her to stop imagining him on her tongue and begged her to step away. She stepped closer. Trailing a finger along one edge of his open shirt, Skip tapping over where the laces entered silver eyes until she found the end of the V near his navel. Nothing but shirt and muscle there. The nagging voice sounded like an angry bee near her ears. Are you colored like this all over? She ran the same finger over the olive-toned skin revealed to her in a flash of light as someone opened the back door. Had she been trying for that door? Yes. Care to show me? I'll show you. She grinned, taking his hand in hers and trailing it down her cheek, neck, and then into the not-as-deep V as his shirt of her dress. The buzzing bee in her mind wanted her to throw away the mask she was wearing, or go throw up the punch. Something wasn't right. At least that's what it kept saying. Flick seemed right enough. Um, I wouldn't normally mind that, but are you sure? We just met. She grinned as the voice inside her head screamed to run. I'm sure. I want to taste you. See if you are as delicious as you are handsome. Birds were chirping in her brain, screeching their little morning calls right in her ears. She blinked, groaning at the heat that spilled all over her. 
The heat to her front and wrapped around her like an arm across her side and resting on her ass was the most annoying, binding her into stillness. She liked to have a little movement. It was stuffy in whatever hold her blankets had on her. She rolled her head back on her pillow, hunting for a cool spot. Only more heat met her. Sunlight now made the world orange in her eyelids. She blinked them open. Tears formed at the corners of her eyes as she blinked to try to figure out what in her room was such a bright blue. The musk of body heat left her nose and the earthly scent of hay entered it. There were also little pinpricks all over her body that were annoying now too. Hay. She was in hay. Bright blue sky through the barn door. Nice. Had she fallen in the barn while feeding? Hadn't she been at a party a second ago? Shete rubbed her eyes with one hand. The other one was tingling numb underneath something heavy. She'd figure that out in a moment. Something snored. Probably the pigs. Was she in the pig pen? She groaned looking toward her arm to see what was laying on it. Pigs weren't olive-skinned, not any that she knew, at least. Oh, oh, oh no! She swallowed down the bile that rose in her throat before she could throw up on him. She struggled, pushing the heavy arm off her and digging her heels into the hay-strewn floor to try to push away, away from the naked, very olive-toned all-over man beside her. He groaned. She clamped her teeth together to keep from screaming. At least she was alive. She could be thankful for that. As he stretched and gave a jaw-cracking yawn, she crowd-walked backwards into a wall. Something behind the wall snuffled with a hot breath. There were the pigs. Hey. She blinked, focusing on his face. Her mouth hung open. She tasted dust and hay. You all right? Chete tried to get her brain to work. His grin faded into a look of drawn brows and a slight frown. It was far better for her, that look. The grin set her mind to whirling. Images of the night before flashed through her mind. Her hands were on his thigh as he drove them to the barn. The way his earlobe felt between her teeth. The sound of his chuckle as she gave him a shove against the barn wall before that chuckle turned into a moan as she kissed him. Who had she been last night? She wished she had part of her today. Shete, wasn't it? It's okay. I... I'm sorry. I didn't think you were that drunk last night. Otherwise, damn, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She shook her head. I wasn't drunk. Oh, that's better. He smiled again. I've never done it in a barn. He kept staring at her. Staring and staring. Wasn't he supposed to get up and leave first thing when they woke up? Sneak out. Never to be seen again? That was the usual thing to do, right? Wait. Was she the one that was supposed to sneak out like that since she had been the... instigator? She groaned, then whimpered, and pushed her face into her hands. I'm not like that. Not at all. This is... All she could do was motion to the space between them and hope he understood. Too much? Maybe we should get dressed. Dressed. Yes. That was a great step. She grabbed out her clothes and pulled them on, feeling far too underdressed to be in a barn, with a man. A beautiful man. There. Do you feel a little better? No. Yes. She hugged herself and shook her head. Ah, okay. Um... You gave me your number. I'll just... I'll just go. I'll call you. She watched him stride out of the barn like he owned the place. Some part of her wondered if one day he might be interested in walking in and out of the barn as an owner. She shook her head at herself. Another image flashed through her mind, one that set her mouth watering. He had everything to brag about, and there was little hesitation. He liked her, or liked whatever she had become. No one liked what she normally was. Her phone beeped and she looked down at the screen. A number saved as Hot Flick sent her a text message. I can't wait to see you again. Maybe we can have dinner once you're up for it. She whimpered, her face burning. A pig squealed nearby and she sighed. Life. Life needed to go on. At least, maybe, she could have dinner out. For once? The thought sent her gad reflex into overdrive. Maybe she could ask him over instead. Dinner at her place. Sure. Like that would ever get out of her fingers or mouth. And that is it. Like I said, I'm not very happy with this story. I mean, it's it's good, but it's just, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm going to add this to the character randomizer playlist. So if you are interested in the rest of the character randomizers or any of the stories that have occurred from the character randomizers, please make sure to check out the playlist. Thank you for watching, and as always, 
Be kind to one another out there. Be kind to yourself. Keep writing. Keep being creative. And I will see you next time.